But look at these things. They're pretty small and you would think pretty simple, right? Wrong. So many things to know before you buy one of these. And because hydrogen water is relatively new and unknown, it makes the misinformation mind boggling to deal with. Who knows what they're talking about? What bottles work best? Who can you trust? There is definitely a lot of junk to sort through. So let me take my decade of experience and let you know what is what about these hydrogen water bottles. So this is a part two video to go with my first video, the problem with hydrogen water bottles. If you haven't watched that video, be sure to watch it because I will be building on what I said there. That video has seemed to help a lot of people, but I've gotten a lot more questions and there are many more claims that need to be cleared up. First, let me give you a breakdown of the topics we're going to be covering in this video. Personal recommendation, testing techniques, legit PEM or not filter membranes, leaching metals, glass or plastic, leaching plastic, family friendly capabilities, heavy use of the bottles, keeping it clean, antioxidant values. A lot to cover here, but we will keep it brief. Like always, if there is anything else you want me to explain, let me know in the comments. Before I get into the topics, did you know that you can support our channel and get exclusive content by doing so? You can become a patron on Patreon or a member on YouTube and get even more hydrogen goodies. You get to see topics and parts of videos before anyone else and extra videos like bloopers and extra hydrogen information and more to come. The more members and patrons we get, Get, the more bonus content we will be able to put out. So be sure to join today. Okay, so first topic, our personal recommendation. This is probably the most common question I've gotten in the comments and personal emails sent to me since putting out the last video. Like I said in the last video, we have always tried to stay away from promoting specific products on this channel so we can keep it as non-biased as we can. But you can check out our approved products that have undergone our testing and passed our performance standards. I will put the link to these bottles in the description of this video so you do not have to go look for them. But only for this video, I have tested many many bottles and we only have three that is on our website. Now, before you ask, we do not have the Echo Go Plus or the Hydra Shot from Healthy Hydration on our website. It is not because they aren't good bottles. It's true bottles, better yet, any hydrogen product has to be sent to us to evaluate and we have not received those H2 bottles yet. You can email me about those bottles and I will provide to you my professional opinion as I've tested very similar products. Now, back to the three bottles that have passed our testing. Does that mean that there are only three bottles that are worth buying? I've not tested every single bottle out there, but out of all that I've tested, many do not perform as they claim. So it is just something to be cautious of. Now, I would love to test all the bottles that are out there or at the very least have knowledge or evidence of them so I can help people better. So if you have good information about a specific bottle, please be sure to let me know in the comments. Or if there's a bottle you would like to send me to test and approve, go ahead and email me and we can set that up. Especially if you're a company and you're interested in having me evaluate and potentially approve your bottle if it passes our performance standards. Number two, testing techniques. This is one that I mentioned in part one of this video, but it needed further explaining. In that video, I talked about the importance of verifying H2 blue test results with video evidence. However, it's good to know that even if someone appears to make a video like this, the results can still be very inaccurate or manipulated. When using H2 Blue, maintaining the correct water level within the beaker is crucial for accurate results, as well as conducting the test with proper technique. Many people get this wrong, especially the correct water level. H2 water samples should be precisely at six milliliters, where the meniscus is touching the six milliliter line, and the surface of the water should be close to seven milliliters. If the water is filled higher than this, then the results can be skewed by 20 to 30 percent or more leading to higher h2 readings than what the actual concentration is we've even seen companies fill their beakers upwards to 10 to 20 milliliters of water which will make the h2 concentration appear two to three times higher than what the actual concentration is but the viewer doesn't know anything about h2 blue and thinks the product is amazing there are two main brands of hydrogen test reagent drops for measuring hydrogen gas content in water H2 Blue 
and Miz hydrogen test drops. Shoe Blue is made in the US and Miz in Japan. Miz features a shorter graduated beaker requiring the user to fill it to seven milliliters of water for accuracy. The chemistry and stoichiometry of these H2 reagents are precise and were developed by highly skilled chemists and engineers. We can vouch for these two brands, but there may be some knockoffs out there, so be careful. It is rumored that these test reagent drops are inaccurate, and of course they can be if the person is unskilled at using them. I consider myself a skilled user of H2 Blue, having used them for nearly a decade decades straight. The test results I have been able to achieve are extremely close to gas chromatography most times. Some people claim that these test reagents are not a good way to test or inaccurate. However, I've found them to be extremely reliable in my experience and that of my research colleagues. This bottle was designed to dispense a specific drop size of reagent to react with a precise amount of H2 molecules. This is crucial and what makes them so accurate if used properly. A company should not transfer this reagent to another bottle at the risk of obtaining inaccurate results. So pay attention to all these details so you're not misled by some of these test result videos. And like I've said before, when in doubt, check with me or on H2 hub or check for an official HU analytics test report ensuring that the test report is up to date. There may be companies out there using HU analytics test reports from previously tested products from their product line and just recycling that test report for their new product. If you're unsure, contact us or HU analytics directly. Number three, legit PEM or not. In the part one video, I explained the differences in these bottles using PEM membranes or AWI technology. It is pretty clear in the marketing of these bottles that PEM technology is preferred. One of the things that we did not mention in the first video is that some companies claim to have a PEM membrane without actually having a PEM membrane. So it's imperative to approach such claims with skepticism until independently verified. Opting for credible third-party validation and ensures the legitimacy of these bottles. In instances where direct verification is impossible, you can conduct these simple tests at home to determine if the bottle genuinely contains a PEM membrane. One way to know what technology a bottle uses is to use distilled water in the bottle and verifying if hydrogen gas bubbles are produced. If the bottle uses AWI technology, it will not be able to produce hydrogen gas with distilled water. Another test is a chlorine test. Generally speaking, if the bottle uses AWI technology, it will be able to produce chlorine in the drinking water. So one thing you can do is use distilled water with a little salt and then test for chlorine with inexpensive chlorine drops or strips. Also, another test is the smell test. If you're using distilled water with a little bit of salt or tap water, in these AWI bottles, it will produce chlorine and produce a smell that smells like pool water. You can tell a lot about a product or a company by looking at their marketing. If they say that the bottle has a PEM SPE membrane and raises the pH of the water, that is a big red flag. PEMs do not raise the pH of the water, but AWIs definitely can. So which one is it? Or if they're referring to PEMs as a filter, that also points out a lack of knowledge. PEM slash SPE membranes are a integral part of the electrolysis process to produce hydrogen gas. I explained this in far more detail in part one of this video, but it does not filter the water. Their terminology is confused. They are confused by the fact that PEM membranes separate the cathode and the anode. So the oxygen, chlorine, and ozone will be off gas or expelled through a pinhole at the bottom of the bottle. But it is not filtered. Number four, filter membrane. This actually leads to my next point where some bottles have filter media above the electrolysis technology. I would actually avoid these bottles as the filters are there to filter out chlorine, ozone, and other contaminants from the anode getting into the drinking water. But it's likely because they use AWI technology, which we have discussed the cons of that in the first video. Now there may be PEM bottles that come with filters here the market at some point and those would be worth considering when they come out number five metal leaching this is one of the most popular questions i get and a common criticism of the bottles the majority of these bottles use titanium electrodes slash plates 
coated with platinum, where the titanium serves as an electron carrier and the platinum serves as a catalyst for the electrolysis process. If there was any metal to leach from these bottles, it would be platinum nanoparticles. The potential leaching of platinum nanoparticles through hydrogen water bottles is currently not a major cause of concern. The majority of these devices operate on very low electrical power with current flow typically at or below a single amp at the cell. Considering the electrolytic cell cathode surface area and amperage of these bottles translates to remarkably low current density with these systems. Typically 30 to 50 times less current density than standard hydrogen water systems. Therefore apprehension regarding platinum or other heavy metals leaching into the water is largely unwarranted at this point. Any such level if the detectable at all would exist in parts per trillion, parts per quadrillion, or even parts per quintillion range. A highly respected colleague of mine who oversees a hydrogen lab in the United States that specializes in therapeutic hydrogen applications has independently conducted multiple EPA laboratory water quality analysis on hydrogen water bottles. None of these test reports have indicated any detectable levels of platinum. Therefore, for most smaller high quality hydrogen water products, this does not emerge as a major concern. However, it's important to note that negligent, low quality bottles, or improper maintenance of larger H2 water devices, leading to electrocalcification, overheating, and debonding of platinum, potentially altering the situation and warranting a different response. Number six, glass or plastic. This seems to be an important question asked among people interested in hydrogen water bottles. Many hydrogen water bottles are available in either borosilicate glass or plastic bottles commonly made with food grade polycarbonate or triton plastic. Glass bottles typically exhibit lower concentrations of dissolved hydrogen gas, ranging from 0.5 five to two milligrams per liter. This is due to the fact that it requires approximately 14 to 20 PSI to dissolve hydrogen gas in water at 1.6 to 2.0 milligrams per liter. With higher PSI, you can run the risk of breaking or shattering the glass. Consequently, to prevent glass bottles from shattering, they often feature larger water volumes, typically 350 milliliters to 550 milliliters, and a lower hydrogen gas production. Higher end plastic bottles typically have a smaller water volume ranging from 210 to 300 milliliters in a higher hydrogen gas production. This is because they are designed or engineered to withstand a significant amount of pressure, upwards of 50 to 100 PSI. This allows these bottles to dissolve a higher concentration of hydrogen gas within the water, supersaturating the water with molecular hydrogen. These bottles generally dissolve three to six milligrams per liter of hydrogen gas within the water. It requires 30 to 60 PSI to dissolve these types of hydrogen concentration in the water. This is the primary reason why you'll see plastic bottles being used with higher end hydrogen water bottles. Now, this does not mean that every bottle you see using plastic is a good H2 bottle. There are many cheap bottles that use plastic or glass containers. It is always best to verify. Number seven, leaching plastic. The polymer PEM membrane used within hydrogen water bottles are very similar to ones used in hydrogen fuel cells, which tend to have a long lifespan or working hours. Typically, the chemical or mechanical degradation of these membranes depend on factors such as membrane thickness, current density, electrolytic cell design, and operational conditions such as high temperature, pH level, exposure to other chemicals, etc. Higher grade naphion membranes are generally recognized as stable and resistant to chemical degradation under normal operating temperatures. However, over time, mechanical degradation can occur. I have yet to see any empirical data or experimental data regarding the release of PFOS or platinum nanoparticles into the water from hydrogen water bottles, as well as not seeing any data showing the release of BPAs or BPS into the water from hydrogen water bottles. Additionally, these bottles exhibit a very low current density at the hydrogen cell, a crucial factor for preventing leaching of platinum or PFOS. Therefore, purchasing a high-end hydrogen water bottle is critical for ensuring the efficacy and safety of the bottle. I've had discussions with HU Analytics who has conducted water quality analysis on several of these hydrogen water bottles, and every report has returned negative for heavy metals or plastics. Number eight, 
family-friendly capabilities. Hydrogen water bottles are great for individual use, especially if you're an on-the-go person, but they may not be the most family-friendly option due to their design for single-person use. It's worth noting that sharing a single bottle among multiple individuals might not be the most practical for a family setting. In such cases, exploring alternatives like countertop or under-the-counter hydrogen water systems might be a more suitable choice. You could invest in an individual bottle for each family member, but but it could get expensive depending on the size of the family and might be difficult to manage everyone's issue water intake effectively. However, I'm speaking as someone with a family with young kids. My family personally uses these hydrogen water bottles more so when we go out of town as well as issue tablets. But at home, we generally use larger hydrogen water systems because between the five of us, we go through a ton of water. So I make this point to help you consider what product is right for your living situation as well as letting you know that there is more than one way to have hydrogen water. Number nine, heavy use of bottles. To add to that point, these bottles are simply not designed for extreme heavy use. The more you use them beyond what they're designed for, the quicker they will fail. So you can see how sharing the bottle between multiple people can be hard on the bottle. Low grade hydrogen water bottles may only last three months to a year with moderate use. Or high end hydrogen water bottles may last one year to three years or more depending on the use. It's best to get high in bottles that supply a substantial dose of H2, allowing consumption of only two to five bottles per day to get an excellent dose of H2. This will minimize the wear and tear and increase the lifespan of your bottle. Number 10, keeping it clean. One thing I've noticed with this surge of hydrogen water bottles is that people drink straight from the bottle. This could be a problem because you're getting bacteria from your mouth in the bottle and the components. It makes it easy and convenient, and I admit I've done it too from time to time. But it's best, if possible, to transfer the water from the bottle to a glass or cup. The best way to clean these bottles is to soak the inside of the bottle with a safe disinfectant, such as hypochlorous acid. I'll post a link in the description so you can buy you some from Amazon. And to descale them, a citric acid or white vinegar soak for a couple hours once a month. Some bottles come with a self-cleaning mode, but this function is limited and not optimized for effective cleaning of the bottles. Self-cleaning mode works by reversing the polarity at the electrodes. So basically the cathode becomes an anode and the anode becomes a cathode. This means hydrogen gas would be produced in the generator and expelled at the bottom of the bottle. And oxygen would be dissolved into the drinking water side. This function aims to reduce bacteria via oxygen, ozone, and chlorine generation and minimize mineral ion buildup on the plates. However, it's not very effective in these bottles. Also, if you add a pinch of salt to the water, these devices can produce a low-grade hypochlorous acid solution on the cleaning cycle. Hypochlorous acid is one of the best, most effective disinfectants in existence. I went into great depth about it in this video and quoted many studies on its effectiveness. But like I said, some bottles are capable of this function, but they're not effective at producing high levels of it. Your best bet is to purchase some hypochlorous acid and citric acid or white vinegar. Number 11, antioxidant values. One major claim from these companies is a comparison of antioxidant value of hydrogen water versus fruit. Some may say drinking hydrogen water is the same as eating hundreds of fruits and vegetables. This claim at its root derives from using the ORAC value of fruits and vegetables and comparing it to hydrogen water. For starters, ORAC stands for Oxygen Radical Absorbance Capacity. It is a tool that is supposed to gauge the antioxidant capacity of a substance. However, the ORAC value or scale is insufficient in many cases and is currently not considered a valid method for measuring antioxidant capacity by the U.S. Department of Agriculture meaning biomolecules or bioactive compounds and foods that exert therapeutic or protective effects have nothing to do with antioxidant capacity. Some people falsely assume that a particular food is better than another based on this measurement, which is not a significant method. We'll link a source in the description discussing why ORAC values have limitations pertaining to several reasons. Furthermore, H2 is not a conventional antioxidant anyway, nor a food. ORAC method for measuring antioxidant capacity would not be sufficient for determining H2's antioxidant-like effects. Actually using this claim points to a lack of knowledge of knowing what H2 really is and how it works in the body. It ultimately detracts from the truly amazing properties of H2's antioxidant health benefits. In fact, it appears that hydrogen can regulate our antioxidant system and upregulate our endogenous antioxidant production. This is far different from simply being a conventional antioxidant or free radical scavenger, 
neutralizing a few bad molecules. Also, it can detract from other amazing benefits of hydrogen gas. I made a whole playlist about the benefits of hydrogen gas that you can go check out next. I'm sure as these bottles become more and more popular, there are gonna be more questions and misinformation. Be sure to comment with your questions or send me an email. All the information you need plus sources will be in the description of this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and to share this video. Be sure to check out the membership opportunities on YouTube and don't miss my bonus features. And that was your part two dose of H2 within minutes.